Hi, and welcome to The Science Hutch. I'm Hutch, and this is The Science. What we're doing here in this video series is we are introducing the AP Physics 1 College Board's suggested labs. Uh, there are nine of them in the College Board Lab Manual. And so this is the very first of nine investigation number one. It's all about kinematics. And talking about kinematics, what do these gumballs, this car, and this ball bearing have in common? Acceleration. What we're trying to do is figure out how much is the acceleration and when is it happening and when is it not. You see this car we started with moves at a constant velocity but all of these other items move with a constant acceleration. Here's the investigation. Your challenge, your goal is to use only a meter stick, stopwatch, and possibly a photo gate, although that's optional, to measure displacements and times and create graphs for the motion of a steel ball. That ball will move it in three stages. Stage number one, it will move across a horizontal track. Stage number two, it will move down an inclined ramp. And stage number three, it will become a horizontally fired projectile flying through the air towards the ground below. Some real world applications mentioned by the college board are in sportsing, you have cross country runners. They are a good illustration of constant velocity. And then in traffic with cars, uh, you have linear accelerations happening all the time, speeding up, slowing down. And then with traffic lights, civil engineers actually have to make a longer yellow light during uh, or in the area of high speed limits so that you have a safer stopping time. Some background information that you should have coming into this lab. Um, here we have what I call the motion graphs mountain. We have three levels of motion when you're describing it, and you'll have more on this in class. But acceleration measured in meters per second squared is a higher complexity of description of motion than velocity measured in meters per second. And then coming down to the base of the mountain, you have position or changing your position we call displacement, both of which would be measured in meters. Okay, more on that in class. Let's go take a look at what you're going to be working with with this lab. Follow me over to the lab. Okay, so here we are in the lab. We've got our track made out of aluminum C-channel. Um, and then uh, we've got a incline piece of the track also made out of aluminum C-channel. This is slightly smaller, so it will fit inside the horizontal piece. We've got a couple of books over here to prop this up and make the incline. So we're just gonna put this in right about here at this other foot. Press it on down there, la la la, nice and tight so you get this lip as small as possible. If you need to, you can give it a little <laughs> tippity tap tap with the hammer just to make sure. All right, let's get a ball bearing and this thing is gonna roll down the incline as such and become a projectile rolling across the floor. So you'll have to have a teammate down there, ayo, to make sure your ball doesn't just roll on and make a hazard on the floor for people. The only other safety thing to concern yourself with is the end of that track is on the, uh, on the inclined end, this part's sticking up a little bit. So I've taken a little foam ball and I've just boonk, put that on there so that no one's gonna bonk an eye on the end of that thing. There we go. Let's talk about the three parts of the lab. Part the first. Now part one is all about this section of motion on the horizontal track. What you need to do is to prove whether or not this motion right there to there is constant velocity or not. And you have to use graphs to do that. Uh, it's no fair. Um, just saying that you feel like it's constant velocity. Part two is concerned with the incline over here. While the steel ball is on the incline, your goal is to take measurements to try and prove whether or not the ball is experiencing constant acceleration. Once again, graphs are key here to proving or justifying your claim. Your goal in part three is 
Simple. Determine how the initial velocity of a projectile launched horizontally affects the distance traveled before it strikes the ground. To do that, you're going to need to take several measurements of several different initial velocities off the end of the track. A photo gate setup as such is not the worst idea in the world for doing that. You definitely want to differentiate between instantaneous velocity at the end of the track and average velocity across the entire run. That's going to be a different thing and you don't want to work with average velocity. The other thing you want to think about is how are you going to measure the distance that this thing travels before it hits the ground. You can't just eyeball it, it's too much error. Carbon paper is helpful here. Carbon paper is a piece of paper that will make a mark if you hit it. So put another piece of paper under a piece of carbon paper, let the ball hit it, and you'll have an accurate marking of how far away from the table it landed. So you're gonna wanna vary the ramp angle Na, da, 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 with some different books and then you'll get different launch velocities off the end of your track which may give you different distances on the floor if those two variables are related. All right, now when finding the relationship between initial velocity of a projectile launched horizontally and the distance that it travels before it hits the ground, think about which variable depends on the other. Which one is the independent variable? Which one is the dependent variable? That'll give you a clue as to who goes on the y-axis, who goes on the x-axis. And then think about when you get a graph of this data, does the slope relate to anything? Does that mean anything? Look to perhaps your kinematics equations uh, to find out. All right, well, hey, thanks for watching. Uh, this has been the Science Hutch. I was the Hutch. This was the science. And you keep on physicsing. Have a great day. Thanks for watching. Bye bye now. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye now. <laughs>